I thought it was a little dry, but I didn't think about that when I wanted. So. Chopstick. Uh, this, but this has actually some soil, some dirt in it. Which I know we're not supposed to call it dirt, but I'm trying to make the point. This is why this is the greatest tool in the world. How does it get its nutrients? Uh, we fertilize it lightly with every now and then with bio dyed fertilizer. No, whatever fertilizer you choose. Whatever you can find. Whatever you choose. <laughs> How often do you fertilize it? Oh, uh, like once a month ish. You know, if it's not growing season, I don't need to do it so much. And th these actually get the ones in my house get uh, orchid fertilizer because I spray. I, most of my orchids are mounted, so I spray like mad to get them on them. I actually don't even really water these that much because. There's so much moisture, moisture in there and it drips all over them. What kind of plant is that? It's a ficus. Ma mistletoe ficus. I forget the mistletoe real name. Somebody looks it up. Ficus. It, it okay. does have a real name. Ficus. I just don't remember what it is. Do the berries are going to turn red? No. No? So. <laughs> they get dark and they, supposedly when they ripen, you can actually plant them. I've never. <laughs> you don't have time, do you? <laughs> Well, I'm not going to plant it, but you, you could. Mm -hmm. I mean. um, is this a mistletoe bark? Well, mistletoe is a real. Uh, I was going to pass that. Oh, here. I can't remember where I put it. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 You decide with pot before you cut the roots off? Uh, yes and no. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends. I mean, sometimes I have a tree that I really want to do something specific with, and sometimes it's just a little tree that I'm putting in the soil to demonstrate. I don't really have any plan for this thing at all. Uh, I plan to make it a heck of a lot shorter, that's for sure. But, so we want to get some wire. We use aluminum wire. Somebody make that for you? Yeah. They were, he was going to try to sell them to the bonsai club, but they're $85 a piece, and only about four of us bought one, and it's not getting good. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a lot of work on that thing. The problem I have is that they've now made the wires smaller, so I can't get them around that thing anymore. So because we got rid of the tap root, we have to wire these plants in. So you're putting that up through the needle Did point the stuff. Tap? Yeah. Well, we... It does, it, I usually cut it before I it's cut it right out of the center. Uh oh, they fell out of the center. <laughs> Chopping the nipples too. Specifically for wires? Uh, some. So it's just you're going through drainage holes? Or I'm going through drainage holes. I'm just making, I actually missed this. So there's plastic stuff in there. Yeah, I got the, the, the grid in there. Missed it. The grid will allow you to do that with just one hole, then, too, huh? Uh, if you do it with just the one hole, um, what I'll, I think I might have some in there. But if you uh, make a little crossbar underneath, oh. so it holds it on. This is not my original pot because I would not have those things moving around like this. So there's a way to do that too, but we don't have to. So I'm going to make a big, actually, I think I should tell you. On a square or oval, a rectangular oval pot, you never plant in the center. You always plant in one of the four quadrants. So you want the tree to come up here and then the weight of the uh, branches over the top of the pot. You wouldn't do it here and then go out because then it looks mm -hmm. like it's going to fall. But, and it might actually just go. If you had a round pot or a square pot, totally square, then you would go in the center. And there's all kinds of formulas for you know, the, the, the length of the pot should be two-thirds of the height of the plant. The uh, depth of the pot should be what they call the nabari, the root spread. So we're not going to go through all that. It is written out in here. Anyway. Okay. So, I think I'm going to put it over 
here growing back on itself. So now I've got the roots. I want to get the wires up through the roots so I can hold the root ball in place. If you can, you, you, know, you choose on your front of your tree, which I haven't really done, which is like big sin, but you would put the wires, you would tie them behind so that the front of your tree is nice. But I, you know, like I said, I haven't really taken the time on this one. So. This is very slapdash. Usually this is like a lot more of the process, okay, just so you know. <laughs> It's such a young, you know, it's, I've had this maybe three, four years, or seven years, I can't remember. But it's not really full. And it's got a big pot, so I'm trying to worry about it. Mm -hmm. I might, yeah, I could, I could, but I'm not going to at the moment. <coughs> Do you ever use pots with no holes? Although I will tell you, I have this pot. <laughs> I bought this at a garage sale, and the guy says, I tried to have a bonsai, it just wouldn't live. And I looked at the pot, and I said, duh, they were blocked. Yeah. <laughs> so there was no drainage, it was just sitting in water. Oh. Oh. Riot. Oh. Well, I can't imagine why your place is bent this way. <laughs> okay, so what we do is we grab that little place that we wired and pinch it. Pinch, pull, and twist. And that's going to tighten up all that slack. The poor roots. Not at all. There's, there's all kinds of soil underneath, and I'm going to make sure they're not full of air. This is the zen part of this, which makes some people crazy. So I'm just dragging the wire up and twisting it to bring it back so that wow. it's in there. And that has no moisture, the stuff you're putting on. Yeah. I'll soak it uh, oh, overnight okay. or a couple hours at least, probably overnight because I'm tired. But I'll <laughs> soak it for... Um, up to the rim in the water. If you go over the rim, by the way, then all your wood bark floats away. So, <laughs> so it looks like it's kind of full, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to do this little twisty thing. And the soil will start working its way down around the roots. So there's not going to be any big air pockets in there. They won't dry out. And I'll end up probably putting the soil two or three times more. Show it on the soil? It's a good half of it is uh, that traction gravel, and uh, the other half, four parts of that half, are the seedling bark, and one part is perlite. And I only do the perlite, it, I used to do more perlite, but it's so light, but it just makes it a little bit lighter. Yeah. See how far, how? This is what, two or three minutes? I might do this for 25, 25 30 minutes at home. <laughs> but you're doing this and it just gets down and down and down. And eventually you can tap it and it doesn't move anymore. And then you know it's compacted. It's like that liquefaction from the earthquake, you know, the soil shakes and shakes and it moves. That's what I'm doing with the chopstick. Okay, because I'm making sure there's no, no place for it to go. It doesn't go down anymore. This, this can take quite a while. Some people go absolutely nuts doing this. Like, ah. <laughs> Wouldn't you prove that on its own? If, if it's you, watering? You know, how long do you want to wait before the... the um, Why can't you just press it with your fingers? Well, you, you don't want to be cutting it. You just, you, as you stir it, it just kind of drops down in the hole. How do you know you're not damaging the roots with that when you're <laughs> um, 
because I'm moving it around, I'm not really letting it hook on anything. And it, it, it always is best to do this when it's a little dry, because then it kind of flops around a little bit, or you can tell the moisture in it, because the roots get kind of turgid. Well, you know, all plants really want to live. That's the big thing. They really, really go through an awful lot of junk that we do to them, and they'll still try to live. I mean, we still manage to kill them. I'm not saying no. But, you know, <laughs> you're faced with the choice of having a happy life or a life at all. You usually go with a life at all. So being in a bonsai pot may not be what they do in Florida, but, you know. All right, so that's not quite compacted enough, but it's more than it was. So the, the stool table. <laughs> An extra hundred bucks just for that. Just for that. Yeah. It's it's any sort of turn, it's a turntable that raises up and down. It's kind of nice. It's good for this type of thing. Because if I was on a table, it'd be a little harder to flip it around. Oh yeah, I understand the turntable. I just didn't. Yeah, it's, 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 it is a special bonsai turntable. It's a conversation piece. If you have yeah, available, a red handled scissor somewhere. Right there. there. Somebody can have them if they want. I'm not going to argue. Yeah. Now I'm going to let that grow again. It yeah. looks a lot better just like that, doesn't it? I, mean, yeah, just, and that's, that's I thought it looked chopped. better initially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, a little root, root form on. Toss them over. Could I have one? I was going to like step back and people <laughs> run towards the table. <laughs> There's three. Do all three of you want one? Okay, one extra one. I know, I know one oh, person who's oh, going to have yeah, that one. <laughs> For the I'm going to share it with Barbara. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five more. Root what? Root hormone? Root hormone and soil? Yeah. We got one more. Well, two over there are sinking, so. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm burning up. Okay. I choose a lucky lady. I know. Well, mine's kind of crowded, too, though, isn't it? <laughs> okay, uh, Mount, is there any other questions? I do have one question. Yes. I, I would like to know if you have made uh, bonsai containers with hypercuba. I have tried, but they're a little flimsier than, than they could be. So I was I wondering if it affected it as far as outdoors, if it absorbed too much moisture. Or no. No. We've, we've had trees in them, but I don't, I, they're just to me not quite happy enough. Oh, okay. A question here on light. You say 16 hours. Is that something that's uh, year round that you keep? Well, if it's, uh, I, mean, I said well, that, if it, if it has a, it needs a winter, it can go down lower if it's a hardy thing. But if it's something you're keeping in the house, like a tropical, they get about 16 hours a day light. Um, I also, I didn't really get to talk about that. That bonsai species, uh, this, these are all things that for outdoors. The time to do this is in the spring. Right, if it's a, a conifer, you want the, when the candles are op are coming up and they're just before they split, that's the time to dig. If it's a, a deciduous tree with some kind of leaf on it, when that bud swells before it opens to a, a leaf or a needle or what it is, that's the time to do it. Okay, put it in a big pot. Be patient, patience, patience, patience. Most people kill it because they're trying too hard, too fast. I mean, rooting these cuttings, uh, sh should they be hot enough first? I just usually, by the time it gets home, I'll just throw them in something. And, you know, I've left it, actually I've left it in, in bags with uh, paper towels, with wet paper towels on it for weeks. Yeah. So I don't get to it, you know how that goes. So if I brought you trees 